Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Bill Sixth Form's career cast. Um, we've heard from friends and family who work um, in finance, medicine, in the civil service um, and in museums and today it's wonderful to welcome F.A. from the world of law. Good morning F.A. Good morning Ed. How are you doing? All right? Nice on this lovely sunny day. Absolutely. It's great to have you join us. Thank you for giving up your time um, to be with us on this sunny, sunny Friday morning in, <laughs> in half term. In half term. Well, I'm on half term, but you're working hard, aren't you? Yes, <laughs> unfortunately. So if we could get started, what um what do you currently do? What's your current role, FA? So my current role, and I have to explain this, is I work in a team called law and policy uh, within the financial regulator so i work for a a regulator which is kind of like a quasi civil service uh department that polices banks and anyone providing financial services and my role is to advise um the powers that be within that regulator as to what they can do um, in relation to certain laws. Um, so if, uh, if they want some advice on whether they can uh, take action against a particular uh, a group or um, if they can um, apply, uh, sort of, you know, take action against uh, a, a, a number of individuals that I would advise on how that can be done, um, whether we have the right rules in place, whether we need to change rules. Um, so that involves not just advising on that, but also sometimes drafting and coming up with new rules um, that will help um, my colleagues work better. Really. So you're like the legal feds, right? You're like the police and you, you police the what's going on in the private sector. Um, yes, more or less, actually. I think, uh, I think that's probably a very good description. Um, when I started at the organisation, uh, uh, in our old building, one of the first things I would see is a, um, is a giant uh, sculpture of, a, of an owl. And I think that almost describes what our organisation does. It kind of looks out for things. It's just kind of monitoring and looking after banks, and making sure that they're all right. But if they uh, step out of line, then uh, we uh, start investigating and looking into them. Great. So you're like the wise old owls, um, keeping an eye on what's going on. In theory, also we hope. <laughs> <laughs> I like the literary reference because I'm a I was an English teacher, so I I enjoy that one. Thanks for that, FA. Um, oh, you're so, welcome. in terms of like day by day, do you do you work five days a week? Uh, is it in an office, small team, large team? What what's the daily work look like for you? So daily work is quite uh, variable. I think uh, I think any lawyers you speak to will say the same. Um, in theory. Um, I'm quite lucky my days in theory are nine to five, but uh, especially now, things can vary quite a lot. So occasionally uh, there could be an emergency that requires me to be in a meeting or uh, give advice um, very quickly, at like maybe eight o'clock in the morning. It may be that matters, um, there's, some, there's some deadline set by government or by uh, um, third parties, which mean that we have to uh, kind of maybe work a little bit later into the day, maybe mm. like, uh, you know, sometimes as far as 10 o'clock in the evening. Uh, but otherwise, I'm quite fortunate. My days are pretty much five days a week, maybe the odd piece of work over the weekend, but generally um, normal office hours. Good. So you feel like you've got a good work-life balance, would you say? Yeah, not too bad, actually. Um, I trained as a barrister um which is like one facet of the um of of the law profession you've got solicitors and barristers and barristers generally tend to be self-employed which i'm not and their hours can be quite varied um so some of um, my friends who i um, interact with and speak with quite a lot um 
find themselves maybe having a couple of days off during the uh, during the week because they don't have any work on but then they may have to work over the weekend so uh yeah i'm quite lucky with my uh my normal hours but uh, mm. each so, their own <laughs> yeah you mentioned the um within the legal profession that sort of the two paths um yes. being as going to be a solicitor or a barrister and you went down the barrister route can you explain mm. to us why you chose that route as opposed to being a solicitor well um i i chose it i think because i i thought i found that the barrister route just sounded more interesting and also because i really like a challenge uh, when i went when i did my law degree um there was um the university provided quite a bit of assistance with careers but it was almost entirely going down the solicitor route it felt it was almost as if they kind of assumed everybody wants to go down that route and nobody wants to be a barrister um whereas i really enjoyed the more um kind of specialist elements of being a barrister the more advocacy elements mm. um kind of you know not necessarily shouting or uh, shouting in court but uh kind of being uh, kind of being the advisory and um kind of p person who would be looking at putting things eloquently um in a way that everybody understands and putting people's view forward mm. uh, which i think is kind of what distinguishes a barrister from a solicitor most of the time um and so uh, i decided that was the path I wanted to go down and uh, as things turned out I qualified and became uh, but uh, became an employed barrister as opposed to self-employed. And were you self-employed at any point or have you always worked for a company? I have always worked um, as an employed barrister. Um, a, n a number of uh, my um, ex-colleagues started um, self-employed and so certainly what I'm seeing a lot at the moment is that we move around quite a lot. So it could be that in five years' time I decide to go to the self-employed bar, which would be very interesting and very challenging. Um, similarly, um, there will be people who are at, at the self-employed bar now who will think, actually, uh, I want to work for a particular organisation or, or you know, a particular firm, mm -hmm. and they will they will go effectively in-house so yeah uh, i know i know it's it's complicated but mm. do you think you could outline the main difference between being a solicitor or being a barrister oh that's a tricky one um i think i think that's a fair point it's um there has there's been so many changes over the past 20 years that actually the, the distinction between a solicitor and barrister can be quite um quite difficult um for example in my the team that i work in currently um uh, there is a number of us who are barristers and there's a number of us who are qualified solicitors mm. uh, but to the average person we're just all lawyers nobody sees us differently in one way or another yeah uh, the main difference between me and a solicitor is i have what's called higher rights of audience which means that without any particular additional qualifications I can appear in court uh, on behalf of in my case on behalf of my employer and represent them um, not all solicitors are able to do that unless they get specific training um, but uh, we tend to distinguish barristers from solicitors in that solicitors generally are the first people you generally have contact with when you have a dispute um, they will generally run you through the process um, barristers tend to get involved when it becomes more specific um, more more likely to be looking at some form of court action or mediation um, that tends to be when barristers step in yeah yeah that's really that's really clear so You've mentioned the importance of adaptability, flexibility, but also that you love a challenge. What, what do you mm. What do you love most about your job? Um, I think what I love most about my job is the potential that something that I've put together will ultimately become law or p potentially become something that people follow. So, for example, um, I 
worked on, and I'll, I'll try not to get too technical, but um, I've been working on some um, rules in relation to what the UK can do about money laundering, so that um, wh- when the UK, uh, when England uh, was still part of the EU, um, the EU would have um, would send down kind of diktats, kind of directions yeah. to um, the UK, saying, "Look, these are the ru- these are the sort of rules we'd like you to put in place," and then the government would put together legislation, put together a law that would kind of cover those, and we'd have to work out how we interpret it so it works for our legal system. And so I've uh, I've been involved in kind of working out how we do that, what kind of rules can we put in place um, which will work with our legal system but tick the boxes for the EU um, and I quite enjoyed that because it was very, always quite exciting when suddenly you know, it gets published in a, on a, um, and you can look it up on, on the uh, legislation website and see oh I was involved in drafting that I think wow. that's probably one of my big highlights that's incredible because you're not just following laws, but you're influencing and shaping and helping to make legislation, yeah. which is really, really exciting. So, so you, that sort of challenge and that role really appeals to you. And uh, what, what are the other perks of your job? Um, because I think sort of in terms of society, it's it comes with quite a level of prestige, doesn't it? And um, yes. to say that you're a barrister, that must be that must feel good at, if, when you go to parties. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I think. Um, though I'm constantly having to explain it to my own mum, I, do. I don't think she quite understands. Um, but yes, I think uh, from yeah, I came from a family of um, you know who, who moved to this country, you know, thirty, forty years ago. Um, none of them are in the law. Um, not, and that's not necessarily a field they thought any of us would go into and so I think in that respect it's it's you know it's been quite encouraging to some of my cousins and uh, some of my um, friends um, kids that they can see um, someone who doesn't come from a legacy family of lawyers has um, managed to do it Um, and I think really it's if I can do it, I think it's a sign that I, you know, some, uh, I hope some more people from different backgrounds will do it too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really what an inspiring thing to share with our, our audience. There's no reason why anyone can't aspire to any career that they're interested in. Um, really. Exactly. <laughs> um, and what do you find most challenging about your job? Um, I think challenging thing is managing people's expectations and making sure they that you give them what they need as well as what not necessarily what they want um a large amount of my job is kind of managing people even though i'm i only really manage one person um so someone will make a request and say oh we want to do this and not only do I have to advise on whether it's feasible to do it, but I also have to maybe find a way of putting it that won't, um, you know, that won't panic them or won't, um, you know, lead them to want to reject my advice. Um, most of the time, really, you're just finding ways of telling people stuff that they don't necessarily want to hear in a way that they, they want to hear it. Um, <laughs> That is brilliant, FA. I love that. That that really uh, that really strikes a chord with me. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Letting people down gently, or uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's... pretty much yes. And uh, so, I mean, it is a challenging job. Obviously, you work very very hard, um, but you say that you've got this sort of balance because there is a there is a stereotype of lawyers working all the hours that God sends. So, um, but you you in your field of law, you find there is there is a sensible work life balance. Yeah, certainly for me. Um, I'm on a, a a working group, so as well as being an employed barrister at, um, at the financial regulator, 
I am also a member of the Bar Council, which is the kind of barristers' union. Mm-hmm. And as part of that, I am part of a group that looks at the well-being for barristers. So I get to hear a lot about how self-employed barristers manage their well-being and how they establish a work-life balance. And at the moment, there's a lot of work being done among barristers, among judges, um, among government organisations to ensure that barristers aren't burning out. And it's down to even little things like um, encouraging judges not to be sending emails requiring things, um, kind of like late on a Friday afternoon. Yeah. Um, because if they do that, it means that um, the, um, barristers and solicitors have to work over the weekend. Um, and it, it's really interesting and really encouraging seeing how, how much um, people are... Um, you know, barristers and judges are doing to kind of just um, ensure that, you know, more of a, and more barristers can have a decent work-life balance. Yeah, yeah. And that's so important for productivity as well as health, isn't it? Um, oh, definitely. I, I've got a couple of friends and family who have been lawyers and then moved out of the profession for that reason. So that that's, mm. um, that's really interesting, interesting to me. Uh, next question was about have you always wanted to be a lawyer a barrister um when you were a little girl what did you what did you want to do <laughs> no i didn't actually I, I think if you'd asked me as a little girl what a barrister is i wouldn't have known <laughs> um i think that my what led me to where i am has been quite uh, uh has moved has been quite convoluted i if you'd asked me i think when i was a little girl i wanted to wanted to be a lighthouse keeper um, <laughs> <laughs> because I thought it sounded fun. Um, I was so disappointed when I found out that uh, actually none of the uh, lighthouses anymore are manned. Oh, they are? Uh, th- oh, that's devastating. <laughs> I know. It, it broke my heart. <laughs> so I had to look on. I think there were times I wanted to act like, because I like the sound of my own voice quite a lot. <laughs> um, and then I think probably around A level time, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Even just choosing de- a degree uh, was so taxing for me. The whole concept of choosing one subject um, that I would be doing for three years really scared me. Um, but over the summer, um, after my A levels, uh, and I wouldn't recommend that everyone takes this part <laughs> but uh, I just started thinking more about law I think I, I saw things on TV there was some interesting law pro, um, programs on at the time and I just thought even if I didn't go into the profession I'd be quite interested to find out more about what what you know about the d- degree and I think one thing I would recommend is that if you're when you are looking at what degree or what you're doing after A levels, um, career is a, is definitely something to consider in the background. But also, just think you're going to be doing something for a long period of time. Mm. You want to be interested in it. Yeah. Are you going to be interested in a particular subject for you know a, a year, three years? Um, and I'm glad that was the approach I took in the end because I did really enjoy my degree. And that's when I heard more about uh, the different professions within the law. Wow, oh, that's um, so it's interesting to hear that it's if maybe later on than people realise in your life. People often think that, that everyone's got a plan set out for years, but actually, saying it was it was as late as that that you decided. So it was a legal degree that you did at university. It was a legal degree, yes. And... Uh, you don't need one for law, actually. Um, virtually any degree will do um but you do if you do don't do law as a degree then you have to do what's called a conversion course afterwards oh yeah um, is that like a a year a year it's a year it's uh, from what i understand quite intense but yeah. it does mean that uh, you can focus yeah it focuses on the the required skills you need um to ultimately go to law school Great. So it's absolutely fine to follow, say, if you've got a love, for, love of history or, or French oh, or yeah. Spanish or philosophy, you can do that as your main degree. And then you can do your year conversion course um, for for that legal specialism. And that, I think that's really yeah. useful for our listeners um, to hear. They don't need to specialise 
as early as perhaps they think they might. Um, so what, <laughs> what, what A-levels did you do, FA? Just out of interest. Oh, the A-levels I did. Oh, God, it's such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did art and design, history, and English language and literature. Right, so a complete mixture there. Yeah. Um, uh, I, again, I chose the subjects that I thought I would enjoy doing for two years. Um, that wouldn't drive me insane. And <laughs> that... Um, that I thought I would, I could do well in really because I am interested in it. Um, you've all you've, ult- sorry. Yeah. I think ultimately they were a good choice. Um, though I did, uh, yeah. As years go on, I, I I I instantly forget what degree I uh, what um what subjects I did do. I'll tell me about it. I can't even remember what day of the week it is. You know, it's just. <laughs> The memory is not as strong as it once was. Um, I was just going to ask, um, sadly our time is, is, is running out, but I was just going to ask about, um, you've mentioned following your passions. Do you have any other advice for our sort of listeners, typically are 16, 17, 18 years old, and they're studying A-levels or level three BTECs. Would you share any advice about possible careers or, or which pathways to choose? Oh, yes. Um, I think what I would definitely say, um, when it comes to kind of looking at deciding what you want to do, uh, I think I'd say two things. Firstly, um, right now, what you decide, uh, you you shouldn't be worried about making a decision that will ultimately, you know, that you're stuck with. Uh, Especially now, I think people change jobs, change directions so often, it's actually to your benefit. to move around rather than stick to one thing if you if you don't want to and so, so don't feel uh, um, concerned that you've chosen something that you don't uh, uh, be, that you're going to have to be stuck with yeah. um, secondly I would also say take any opportunities that come to you there are definitely things that I was given the opportunity to do which I thought oh but that doesn't really fit in with my plans that's not exactly what I want and with hindsight I wish I had um whereas conversely there have been things that um were offered to me and I thought oh that doesn't fit but I'll have a go and actually they have uh, resulted in some amazing opportunities and some amazing experience so take any opportunity you can get and mm. make any opportunity that you can uh, that you can get absolutely can you still hear me oh we've just sadly lost fa momentarily but we will get her back on in just a moment oh really sorry about that listeners my phone overheated during our um fa's sage advice and um Fortunately, I've dipped it in some water. No, I haven't really. Don't try that at home. <laughs> I've given it a bit of time out, and uh, and we're back. We're back on the road. So we're going to go straight back to FA, who patiently has been waiting for us. And you were mentioning your advice about keeping an open mind for students to follow their interests and their passions. And you also said to take every opportunity, even those that don't seem to fit in with your with your plans, as it were. Um, is is yeah. there anything else that you would say to any sort of 16, 17, 18 year old? Um, I think ultimately just be flexible. Create your own career path. Not every career path follows the same path, uh, kind of trajectory. So if you find a creative way of getting certain experience, then definitely take it. Um, you know, uh, when it when an employer looks at a CV, um, they are often drawn to things that are a little bit unusual. So. Um, don't feel don't be afraid to uh do something a little bit outside of the box to get that experience and you mentioned experience there a couple of times did you did you have work experience in a a legal chambers or or in a law firm or anything i did but um not till university so i did what's called a mini pupillage which is a a, a, a week of uh work experience um at a in a, a couple of barristers chambers um which I found really interesting. I also uh, spent a lot of time just popping down to the local Crown Court uh, to observe hearings and and trials because they're all, most of them are in a public forum, so you can just pop in, pop in and have a look. Um, 
I also, uh, otherwise, when I graduated, I worked for a solicitors for uh, nine months, I think, um, which I think firmly confirmed in my mind at the time that I didn't want to go down that path. And certainly, I did at the time I was working in property, it confirmed in my mind that I didn't enjoy property law. So yeah. um, I kind of picked up a lot of things kind of around university in my early career experience wise. Um, otherwise, I did quite a lot of volunteer work um, during, uh, during my GCSEs and A-levels um, just to kind of keep myself going, really. Yeah, yeah. I think the um, all work experience is, is good experience, isn't it, in terms of um, getting you interested in a certain field or actually making you realise that that's not what you what you want to do. I, I'm going to give a shameless plug here because I just want to say to the students who are listening, we have our weekly bulletin that's full every week of so many uh, work experience placement opportunities, particularly now there's like virtual work experience going on. Um, loads of volunteering. There's so much on that weekly bulletin. So do check it out and sign up for as FA says as much as you can get as much experience as possible. And then you're making informed decisions about about future career choices. Um, we come to our last our last question. FA oh. um, and it's, it's it's flown by we really appreciate your time I know that you're very very busy but it's it's really interesting just to hear about about life in law um, this is a question that I ask all of our guests uh, lots and lots of uh, families and individuals are suffering at the moment with the with the pandemic that's going on um, but we like to end every episode with a little bit of hope and so I wanted to ask if there's anything that you think may anything good that may come out of this current crisis perhaps in the in the world of work um life of maybe life as a lawyer um or just generally in society do you think there's any th good things that may come out of what has been such a sad time oh that is a tough question um yes i think um i think the first thing that comes to mind uh not specifically for all lawyers but certainly for me and I think some of my some people I know who, who work um, predominantly in offices is there will be more uh, looking more into the way that we work generally um, what some of your students will discover um, if they've done any work experience or gone into any offices is that so many of them hot desk mm -hmm. uh, because it's a flexible way of, of working and but that is completely different from how um, offices used to run even 15 years ago, mm. uh, where generally you had your own desk with your own little section, whatever. Um, the current pandemic is definitely making a lot of offices rethink where the hot desking works and if there are other more flexible ways of working. And so hopefully this will encourage some offices that are very kind of uh, who have taken uh, maybe more st sticking to a particular way of working to look at other ways of working that uh, that allows more flexibility for workers. I think we'll see a lot more people being able to work different hours uh, depending on what works for them or what works for their childcare. Mm. And that will be very exciting. And do you think more working from home? I think definitely more working from home. Um, I know uh, there's a couple of banks, even before lockdown, were actively encouraging people to mostly work from home, um, which has its pluses and minuses, I think. Um, but certainly, I think people have more opportunity to do that than they, than they may have had before. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. Thank you very much for your time, F.A and for You're sharing welcome. sharing your experience um, and for inspiring our listeners and uh, take care and, and keep safe and um, yeah I, I, we really appreciate your time so speak no soon okay thanks very much yeah. you're welcome bye bye thanks.